We're back, and uh, good news is, because we more or less know what we need to do, uh, we should have a bit more opportunity for exploration in terms of looking at some of the wrong answers. So let's go ahead and do just that. Let me just see if I need to collect that. I didn't actually do that last time, did I? Okay, let's start with the frozen forklift. I collected some of those uh, short timies from Iris's body. Of course, the forklift. she would be the motivation to speed the things up around here. Frozen to the floor. Frozen forklift. We can push it, try and drive it, or pray to it. Uh, let's go for the pray option. 160 seconds, down to one. Please move. Please. Pray to Atua. It's... We'll move. It's not listening. No, it's a false idol, this forklift. Perhaps I need to power up over a few episodes first. <laughs> oh my. Maybe. Dragon Ball Z flashbacks. But in any case, it doesn't look related. Ah, shucks. Okay. Uh, there's driving it. Let's... I mean... We could check that out. We can go to the ice cutting machine, actually. I don't think I viewed this last time. A machine used for cutting ice. Uh, ooh, whoa. <laughs> Turn it on. 300 seconds, we'll get a negative timey out of it. Kick it. 200 seconds, negative timey. And move. I mean, should we turn it on? Perhaps. Iris will be cut in two if you turn on the power. Perhaps this is the motivation Ota needs. Are you thinking that might be the motivation Ota <laughs> needs? <laughs> You read my mind. It may dream, but it could severely damage Ota's mental health. It, yeah, but he's gonna save her, right? You're right. I didn't think about that. Let's not do that. Oh, okay, fair enough. And we got the times to nega timey. Agent Date, you've got five minutes. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna need to get rid of this. Should we try kicking it now? A machine used. If I kicked it, what if it started moving? Ugh, you're not that strong, Iba. Then we should apologize together. <laughs> what? Don't apologize. That would be bad luck. You're right. You should apologize. I don't need to apologize. It is our responsibility, of course. But I will not apologize. So no one's apologizing then. Great. That's maybe not the best attitude. Why the hell not? Let's try and drive this thing. A frozen... Frozen forklift. Down to 30 seconds drive it or do we push it drive it what you have to adjust to Ota's fantasy ah I understand we're basically gonna use the forklift to lift the ice cutting machine out of this universe here we go make sure you put your parka on All systems green synchronization rate six percent six percent now cargo handling car forklift sortie it's not moving. This thing is the most unhelpful forklift of all time. It doesn't listen to our prayers. It won't drive. In fact, it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> okay, let's move on. We're running out of time. <laughs> Icy floor. The ice on the floor is slick. It sure is. Like Date's hair. Ooh, slide, lie down. Let's slide. Leave it to me. <laughs> Yuri Kazuki? <laughs> Eros! Oh, oh, it worked. Good exhibition. That'll score high. Damn, I thought we had to punch that, but nope, we can also skate all over it. It would have been perfect if I had a tight black bodysuit. I mean, perhaps. Maybe you can do a Javier Fernandez routine next. Do a triple axel jump. Those who don't fight won't survive! Oh. <laughs> there he goes. Right, Shining Light, escort him to the red you shelf or the green shelf. Talking. I know, I know, I know. Okay, we're going this way. There's an oil drum. Let's check that out. An oil drum, though it is lying down. Roll, fill, smell. Roll. Damn it, <gasps> Iba. There we go. Ah, it's going to the red shelf. That's what we needed to do, actually. I thought we needed to check the plate. Quite right. So where is this going to lead us? 
what will change. An set. <laughs> There's what the A. This? Okay, we had inadvertently found the right answer. Here comes the hulking polar bearzilla. The flaw knife. No, I don't want to die. I eventually stopped thinking. Wait, what? That's Tessa! <laughs> She's the oil drop. I told you it didn't look like a cabaret girl. Freaking hell, it looks like Tessa. Of course. Oh, there he goes. Oh, jeez. Dude. St stand your ground! Oda Matsushita cowers to no one! What does that do? There we go. Alrighty. Well, we're working on limited time because of our antics at the beginning, but that's okay. I have to fight back with something! Alright, there's that machine over there. Counterattack ignited. Turn on the electricity. Just over two minutes to go. There's the remote control. There's the power board. We need to turn on the electricity. So, straight for the power board. Let's go. It appears to be a power panel. Well, it says off. Throw something, jump, pray. <laughs> uh, let's, let's jump. No, let's throw something. Let's use our 40 because it's the exact same result as using the 1-6. This is an ice cold one. Oh my gosh. What are we, Mr. Freeze now? Iba, aim for the switch. Where's your Arnold Schwarzenegger impression? Position target in the center and hit the switch. Position target in the center and hit the switch. Come on, a ultimate baseball star. There we go. Oh, ice shot. There we go. Power on. Somehow turned on the wireless remote control. Now it will move. I, the crane. I can't stand. I'm weak. Just crawl like you did before. Did he really help Iris like that? Regardless of the truth, right now, I am Ota's last hope. I have to help him up. It's always left to the sidekick. This is annoying. <laughs> Alright, we're not friends yet. We haven't had that you have less than meaningful scene in the Hurry. hospital. Final ep, brave hero, true identity revealed. Oh my gosh, are we going to reveal the identity of the bear? Remote control. A remote control. It fell when Ota ran into the shelf. Lift its mask off. Investigate, press button, break. Press the button. Here it goes. Which one? Okay, we're pressing one. I hear some sounds, but no response. I'm not sure I should press it. Ota might need to. Of course. Yeah. Ota. So what, we need to like throw it to him? Ota. Ota looks frightened. He cannot stand. We can't take the credit. Cheer, motivate, encourage, calm. Uh, cheer him on, like we did last time, I think. Ota will feel the worth of Iris's peace when he grasps it. The ghost inside me whispered. <laughs> we hypnotized him. That's right. Just like last time. I can't run away now. I can't sacrifice Tessa. Awaken the soul. He almost kicked Iba out of existence there. Here we go. It's like killing Mirai in Zanki Zero. Just a crane just swinging by. Who's underneath that mask? Maybe this! If it's Sosajima, I will laugh. <laughs> Here we go! What if it's just like a donkey head? A mask under a mask. What if there is no head, but it's like Ichabod Crane? Here we go! Ooh, shit. That was freaking vicious. Okay, maybe it's a good thing it didn't, you know, swipe at his head. Alright. Ota, go ahead. Dr. 
Dante, you hit the limit. Time's up. Wait. Boss, I can almost make out their face. Boss, don't Jenner, fucking tell me. Force shut down. Stop! Stop it! It's her. <laughs> he got stabbed. <laughs> <sighs> Both pools of blood mixing. There we go. Unable to unmask the bear. Unfortunately. Hit the limit, my ass. Boss, what the fuck are you trying to do right now? Pull me out! Pull me out! Day four, Monday. Siogai. What were you thinking? Um, I'm investigating. What are you doing? You can only stay in Somnium for six minutes. Any longer and you risk getting your mind completely taken over by the subject. Well, I mean, shit. Ota's mind isn't exactly a bad place to get taken over. I get superpowers. I know. No, you clearly don't. This isn't just about you, Date. Maybe she's just reprimanding me for all my antics at the beginning of the Somnium. <laughs> Sliding on ice, praying to a forklift. If your consciousness erodes inside of Somnium, you put the subject in danger as well. If I may? Fortunately, there were no abnormalities detected in the brainwaves after the sink. But there was an issue with Ota's sink, right? That's what forced you to fix the machine the next day. Date and Ota both read normal. Although, the timing was really close. 30 seconds, I've cut it way closer. What was I supposed to do? You saw it, boss. You too, Pewter. We were about to get the identity. I was about to see the culprit's face. Not necessarily. We need to verify that Ota did, in fact, see the culprit's face. True. Could have just dreamt it. That's the only way it could have ended up in his Somnium. Well, Ota... Huh? You saw the killer's face at the warehouse, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see their face. If I did, I would have told you guys already. You see? I mean, I did try to get a look at them when the polar bear fell over. They looked like they were knocked out, so I tried to grab the head part. But as soon as I did, I got stabbed in my gut. Hmm. Adrenaline would have been high. He probably didn't even notice the knife right at the polar bear's paws. That is what we witnessed in his Somnium. Yeah, damn. Thought we were on to something there. Well, shit. The locker. I've been watching you. No, oh, the voice! Forever and ever. It's back! Hey, did you hear something just now? I did not. Perhaps you're imagining it. But you're linked to my mind, Iba. Are you pulling a prank on me? Damn it. I wish I could climb up on that table and fly around the world on it with Tessa. Really? You don't want the bow of a particular cruise liner in the early 1900s? What kind of fantasy is that? <laughs> I opened it up. It's stuffed with mysterious mushrooms. All right, a few new things loitering around. Now, boss. Boss looks more upset than angry right now. Hmm. If she looks more upset than angry, then perhaps... I mean, we did... S we did uh, get the notification from Boss that the stream was live, right? So, I mean, she didn't have a polar bear head when she called in, so who knows? The identity of the polar bear is still a mystery. Pewter is calm, as usual. After the sink, Ota changed into his usual clothes. He looks tired, sitting on the chair. I'm sitting on the chair. I must be exhausted. Sorry, Boss. I know it was dangerous to sink past the time limit. That was my fault, and I'm sorry. But I really did have 30 seconds! Are you really sorry? So sorry. Yes. Then you owe me some Dom P at my favorite club in Kabukicho. Mm, fine. Or, you can lick my shoes. Oh. Either or. I vowed to never apologize for everything- for anything ever again. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. We will never say sorry. We are going to be that kind of ass. About my brainwaves and notice. It's all right. 
As I mentioned earlier, both your brain waves are normal. Okay, good, because I don't think there's enough people in the world who could handle the snark machine that would have been created out of our fusion. However, I'm sure there was some overload. You should go home and get some rest. Okay. Well, we did realize in the other route that uh, our sink actually did some damage to the machine, which is why Pewter had to fix it before we could sync with uh, Mayumi. So, quite curious to see if there are going to be any negative effects on this route. How are you feeling? I've been better. I'm still a little drowsy. What about your stab wound? My what? Your wound? Your battle oh. scar? <laughs> oh, it hurts. Oh. It started acting up suddenly. Ow! Whoops, probably shouldn't have drawn attention to it. It's because you grabbed me and forced me to come here, Date! Oh god, he's gonna sue us. Don't blame me, that was boss. Boss, he's gonna sue you. I'll sue you for this! I knew it, I called it! Oh, come on. Nor, how about this? What, you blackmailing me now? Get me one of the straws Tessa used, and I won't sue you. You what? <laughs> you want a used straw? Goodness. I see Ota is back to his healthy self. Healthy is probably not the right word I would use, Iba. Guess so. He's back to his delirious self, more like it. About the hook in the polar bear's leg. Ota, let me ask you something. When you were fighting the polar bear back at the warehouse, did the crane hook get stuck on the polar bear's leg? Or was that just imaginary? Because if it did, we've got something to look out for. Now that you mention it, maybe it did. I, I can't use a maybe, Ota. I need a definite. Maybe? It's like I told you. I don't really remember much. With all the tension and excitement and fear and adrenaline, my mind just went blank. Damn. But now that we're talking about it, I remember. What? Yeah, no doubt about it. The crane hook got stuck on the polar bear's left leg. Left leg, okay. And then, when the hook got pulled out, blood sprayed all over. Hmm. Date, I checked all of the hospitals in the metropolitan area. None have a record of a patient admitted after 3 a.m. with a wound to the left leg. No doubt. I mean, they probably went to a mob doctor or something. If what I saw in Somnium is how it happened in real life, that was a deep wound. He definitely would have needed first aid. Perhaps a friend or accomplice helped them. Or he treated himself or herself. You think there are multiple killers? That is not what I said. They may have helped the culprit, but not necessarily been involved in the crime. Exactly. Maybe it was an uncle, and they just say, No questions, just treat my leg, and the uncles just say, Okay, alrighty, no worries. No questions. I relayed the information to Boss and Pewter. Well, Boss is proudly displaying our legs, and I don't see any gash on them, so... Yeah, kind of already answers that question, doesn't it? Why were you hiding the knife in your room? Because I was scared. Scared? The killer could come here to finish the job. Hmm. But you didn't get a good look at their face, right? And you didn't want to relinquish it to police officers. But they don't know that. I had it prepared just in case. You know what I'm talking about, right, Date? Preparing in advance in case you might need it? Uh, I wish I did know what you were talking about. Otherwise, I would have seen that walk under the table. Like making sure your room is nice and clean before you go to a party. <laughs> Date ain't denying it. Oh, sorry. You probably don't have any experience with that. Ooh, I have more experience than you. <laughs> we just can't remember past six years, that's all. So we know that the culprit has a deep wound on their left leg. Presumably. He did say maybe, and I don't know how reliable his memory is. That information could be crucial in catching them. Date, get out there. Look for people with an injured left leg. Oh, okay. Sure. I'll just walk down the street and see if anyone's hobbling along. How exactly? <laughs> Can't you just go ask around or something? Hey, excuse me. Uh, were you always in a wheelchair, or did that just happen uh, the other night while you were dressed in a polar bear costume? My gosh. I'm gonna get my ass kicked and dirty looks from the public. Are you serious? Do you know how many people live in this city? <laughs> Oh, we're getting hazy. We are getting hazy. What? Okay. I wonder if uh, Sosajima 
maybe had an injury to his leg. And, well, we couldn't discern the injury because he ended up getting hacked to pieces. Dante, what is the matter? Uh, I'm destabilizing. I think Hota's consciousness is taking over. This isn't good. Oh, we're slumping. We're slumping. Oh. Oh. Dante, are you all right? No, nope, my eyes are making noises again. Day five, Tuesday. Say sorry. Date residence, Tuesday, eight o two a.m. Mizuki. Hey, this is my house. Oh, you're alive. Well, you upset, Mizuki? Sorry, that was a very poor thing to say to someone who's just lost both their parents. What happened? You drank too much at the club and passed out. Oh. Well, there's worse ways of being unconscious. Liar. I remember everything until I collapsed in the control room. You did something dangerous during the sink last night, didn't you? Your brain got overloaded and you passed out. Maybe. That's what Pewter and Boss said. You met them? They brought you over. They said to let you sleep it off because you were tired from the investigation. Well, that's very kind of my colleagues. Ugh, why? Couldn't you have lent me a bed then, at the very least? Why do I have to lie on this stiff couch? Now my joints are all mucked up. Right, let's have another look. Alright, not a lot going on in our environment, so that's okay. Mizuki's sitting on the edge of the bed. Don't you have school? I'm off today. Fair enough. Bereavement leave, I guess. Why? Today is Tuesday. You should have school. You really can be an insensitive jerk, can't you? Yeah, Date, how dare you say that she was glad you were dead. Goodness. Taking the day off for morning. Date, you said you remembered everything. Jeez, poor girl. I see. Did Boss and Pewter say anything? Oh, Date's brain is rotting away. He won't last long now. Well, shit. Maybe I'll just become a zombie and eat your brains. You should probably prepare for a funeral soon. <laughs> Morning, are you? So they told you I'm completely fine, huh? Hmm. I detect no noticeable damage to your brain. That wasn't already there. You should not have any issue continuing the investigation. Thank you for clearing me for duty. Where is Ota? He probably went back to the hospital. Boss told Mizuki about Ota being synced. Hmm. And about what happened at the cold storage warehouse. Why did she tell her all that? Because Boss likes to talk. Mizuki was asking about the status of the investigation. The girl has lost both her parents. I am sure Boss felt that she deserved to know. Fair enough, actually, yeah. No point in trying to protect her. She's a big girl, I think. Time to get back to the investigation. Hey, will you take me with you? You want to come again? I told you yesterday, Mizuki. I won't put you in danger like that. But you're close to catching the culprit, right? Oh. Uh, yeah. 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 The killer has an injury on their left leg. Yes. Boss said you need to find them. Let me help you. Okay. No. You stay here. I'll ask one suburb. You go to another. Date? Don't you know how I feel? My parents are dead. I saw their bodies with my own eyes. I think it might do more harm than good to leave her here by herself, you know? If we leave her here by herself, she's probably just going to sneak off and run her own investigation, and she might run into trouble herself, just like um, Iris and Ota did. If I don't do something, I'm going to go crazy. I think it would be a good idea to just... Keep her at our side, keep an eye on her, make sure she's okay, and she can also feel like she's contributing to the investigation, you know? Date, please. I think she's old enough. Even if this is an act, I think it's a good idea. But I want to believe her. Mizuki. <laughs> Date, consider Mizuki's feelings. I am. She is lonely. Mizuki has not been with Renju and Shoko for four years. And now she can never be with them again, so... 
Well, she has us and her friends. But clearly, she still feels a bond to them. A bond that was broken by the murderer. With her parents gone, Mizuki has almost no one. She can only depend on one person now. And an AI eye. You know to whom I am referring. <laughs> Tell Mizuki that you'll take her with you. Come on, let's get moving. Fine, let's go. You're gonna take me? Yes. Yeah. What are you giving me the evils for? It's not some sort of deceptive trick. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you, Date. You're welcome. Come on, let's go. We have our moments, Mizuki and I, but... You know, she's still my best pal. I got up, grabbed the towel from the sink, and tossed it at Mizuki. Here, wipe your tears. <laughs> We're heading out. Mizuki quickly dabbed her eyes with the towel and smiled weakly. Date, I must admit, I am at a disadvantage. Why, did Ota infiltrate your mind as well? Oh no. The clue that the culprit is injured on their left leg does not help me narrow down suspects significantly. Yeah, well, our murderer is one crafty bastard. I don't think they're going to do anything that will call attention to their injury. We need to revisit the scene. If anything, they might be in hiding right now, so we should be looking for someone we can't get a hold of. That would be my first port of call anyway. Someone who wouldn't want to show off their injury, right? They want to lay low. It's possible that we might find the culprit at one of the crime scenes. Or ask around the city for further information. Don't know about them returning to the crime scene unless there's something that will definitely point to them being guilty and they need to recover it. Right, uh, Mizuki? She looks like she just washed her face. She's ready. Cool. Well, we've got a lot of places to cover. Marble, Central Hospital, Sunfish Pocket, Limnus Gate, Cold Storage Warehouse, Ikumi Shrine, and Bloom Park. Let's, uh... Let's go to where it all began. Might as well. It's number one on the list. Bloom Park, Tuesday. I remember telling you before that Bloom Park is an important part of my memories. Hmm. Before it shut down, I came here a lot with Daddy and Mom. I know. They fought a lot. But sometimes they got along. Whenever we were here, it was one of those sometimes days. I remember it clearly. I was just a little girl, but it was so rare to see them laughing together. Sorry, I'm just like smiling weakly myself at uh, her reminiscing about our memories. That's why I remember it so well. The panda. We saw that in her somnium, I believe. I remember riding the merry-go-round like this. Mom was standing right next to me. She was holding me, so I wouldn't fall. Mizuki's acting very somber now, isn't she? Where was Renju when you were on the horse? Daddy was on the outside, taking pictures of me and Mom. <laughs> he was on the other side of the fence with an old camera. Every time we passed in front of him, Mom and I would wave our hands. Sounds like a happy memory. <laughs> we sound like a happy family, huh? I mean, when you have a tumultuous relationship like your mother and father have, or had, I should say, uh, those kind of moments really stick out, huh? He must have gotten good pictures. No, actually. <laughs> Terrible ones. We tried developing them at the park, but they came out all blurry and out of focus. But mom wasn't mad or upset or anything. She just started laughing. Probably called it cute. That might have been the first and last time the three of us laughed out loud together. Have you come here before with friends? Other than last Friday? Nope. I haven't. This place has been off limits for almost a decade. Yeah, pretty much her entire life. Even if it wasn't, I don't think I would want to come back here. Why is that? How can I explain it? I guess I just wanted to keep that memory beautiful. Right. I understand. Coming here again might uh, soil or even kind of replace those happy memories. I didn't want to ruin it or replace it with another. Exactly. But in the end... It was replaced by the worst memory possible. Now her best and worst memories have taken place on this merry-go-round. Goodness. Did you go on any other rides? 
I couldn't get on many of them because I was so little. But I did ride the Ferris wheel. And the panda ride. Hmm. They're kind of tame now, but at the time they were really fun. Yeah. I was having so much fun, it felt wrong. Like it was too good to be true. It's not a good feeling for a kid to have, huh? That it's wrong to have fun. Uh, before I finish up with Mizuki, I haven't even looked around. Jeez. Last Friday, I found Mizuki inside the central column. Okay. Say nothing. I didn't say anything as Mizuki climbed down from the horse. Then, she asked me something strange. Hey, Date. How do you define family? Ooh, how do I define family? Uh, a sense of belonging. A sense of home, if you know what I mean. I mean, it doesn't have to be blood family, right? It can also be just a really, really good friend that you feel is like a brother or a sister. Uh, or someone who looks after you, like an older person, like a feel like they're your uncle or your aunt. Yeah, sense of belonging, I think, is the best bit. Someone who you'd let walk into your house uninvited, you know, no worries. If they just showed up at the door and you'd do anything for them. Define it? You mean like being blood-related? <laughs> Tate taking the literal approach. That would mean you and I could never be family. Well, I guess that's okay. Is it? It's okay. <laughs> Tate suddenly takes offense. This is what I think. A family is a perfectly ordinary relationship in the most ordinary way. Hmm, okay. I see. Huh? Like, you say... I'm home, and you get a welcome home back. Right. So mundane sort of stuff. Doing those ordinary things automatically, without even thinking about it, is what a family is. Hmm. That's why maybe me and mom and daddy weren't able to be a family. Right. I'm sorry. Our whole lives, we never could be ordinary. Even if I tried my hardest to be normal, it would just be awkward. Unfortunately... In your case, it's a three-way street, you know? Everyone has to contribute, not just you. Eventually, I got tired of trying. It's like swimming against the current. I killed them. You didn't kill them. Don't say that. What? I killed mom and daddy. It wasn't your fault they were at each other's throats. It wasn't your fault because you gave up that they suddenly just broke down. Hey, what are you saying? I... I was never a good girl. I didn't listen to Mom. I couldn't do ordinary things. That's why Mom hit me. Oh, my. And why Mom and Daddy didn't get along. And why they got divorced. Look, they had bigger problems, okay? It's like those people that are having problems and they think, you know what, let's have a kid, that'll fix things. No, it does not. It exasperates it. And, uh, you're just making life hell for the child as well. You got problems, having a baby isn't the solution. That's my opinion. And, uh, if that's what happened here, well, shit, now look. Mizuki feels responsible. Then mom had to start working and start doing business with dangerous people. All because you didn't listen, Mizuki? She, she was her own person. She made her own decisions. If I was just a good girl, mom wouldn't have been killed. This... All of this is all my fault. Not to mention that is a grand extrapolation of events, okay? You could have still been a good girl and maybe Ranju still would have divorced your mother and then what? You know? Stuff you can't predict. Come on, Date, this is your chance. Be your family. Hey, haven't you had enough? Why me? No, I'm not married. So take this with a grain of salt, but it's not just you, right? It's the first time we're hearing her voice, and seeing her sprite, even. Doesn't every family have a tough time raising children? Our child is abnormal! Oh, because of her strength? Abnormal? Ever since she was a baby. What a thing to say. My child's abnormal. <laughs> and saying it with such disdain. God. No child should cry at night as much as she did. No child should dislike buggy rides that much. No child should ask to be picked up and hugged all the time. Uh, that is exactly what a child 
does. If an, ad if an adult said that. Like, can I go on the buggy ride again and again? Or if an adult said, can you pick me up and hug me all the time? You'd be like, stop acting like such a child. <laughs> because that's what a child does. She's still abnormal even now. Other children would have learned to clean up after themselves by now. I mean, just off my first impression, you know, I can see why Rinju buggered off out of there. They would be studying, going to bed on time, waking up on time. What? They're not a robot. Children need to have fun as well. Yet why is my little girl... She sounds like a normal kid to me. Yeah. Maybe the problem isn't with Mizuki. Maybe it's you. <laughs> I'm doing more than anyone. Oh, yeah, of course. When things don't go their way and they still say, well, I'm, I'm doing everything. No one else is helping me. Uh, it's usually a problem. Our child is stupid, brain dead, abnormal. Date, honey, you can't work her up like that. Well, it's my fault that I'm working her up? Jeez, she's worked herself up, really. Look at the glass in her hand, Mama. Jeez, I feel bad just inserting myself into everyone's lives. First Ota's family, now we're going straight into Mizuki's. Okay, Mama. Mama's polishing the bonito, as usual. Shoko's drunk. I mean, yeah, maybe she is a bit inebriated, but still, saying those kind of things. Where's Mizuki now? Sleeping at home. Oh, how dare she be asleep. You're the mother out at the bar right now. Not knowing that her mother is crying her eyes out because of her. Yeah, that's not really her fault. What do you think, Mama? I think she's loaded. With cash or alcohol? Or both. I mean, both, really. Let her get this off her chest. Oh. You mean, <laughs> she's got a lot of baggage. You should scold her. Hey, Shoko, no, 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 no. I'm surprised you're telling your customers off like that. There, I scolded her. <laughs> I'll take a drink. You sure you aren't drinking too much, honey? If you pass out, there's no way I can control her. You want to call it a night? What? Why? I finally get some time to myself and you want to end it? I mean, it's not doing you much good. Date, really? Just let her talk a little longer. Oh, you just want to drive your revenue up, Mama. It's okay. I understand. <laughs> Go ahead. <sighs> Poor Date. He's just like, I want out of here. She can talk to you, Mama, can't she? Listen to the rest of the story. I quit my job for that girl. I threw away the career that I built with my own hands. I raised my child at the expense of my own life. I mean, that's what having children is if you want them to grow up, like, nicely. <laughs> you can't just carry on like nothing's ever happened. Of course your life's gonna change. That's the decision you make when you have a child. But one little slap. Are you hitting your kid? There's nothing I can do. I have no choice. What the fish? Of course you've got a choice. I know you should never raise your hand to a child. Yeah. Jesus. I know that. I know that. And you do it anyway. But I have a good reason. No. What is your good reason? Please, humor me. She doesn't listen to me. So what else am I supposed to do? Fucking uses the carrot rather than the stick. What the hell do you mean, what am I supposed to do? That's no reason to hit a child. So of course she starts crying. <laughs> well, how unexpected. And it's so irritating that I have to hit her again to get her to stop. <laughs> it's two wrongs to make a right, I'm afraid. And Mizuki cries and cries some more. Why are you crying? If you're gonna cry, why didn't you just listen to me in the first place? Then I wouldn't have to hit you. Stupid Mizuki. I'm just gonna let her run her mouth right now. <laughs> Stupid girl. It's not my fault. Obviously, it's like me arguing to a brick wall because she's just a video game character, but you know what I mean? Everything is her fault. I like to talk to the characters like I'm there. This is why I behave the way I do in these Let's Plays, talking to the characters. Sorry about that. Have you talked to Renju about this? I'm trying. I'm trying harder than anyone. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Keep trying. Why doesn't anyone see that? Why doesn't anyone understand? 
If you were trying harder than anyone, you would come up with a different solution than slapping your own daughter. Just say. <laughs> Date. What are you looking at me for? Yeah, I'll talk to Renju about this. It was my misunderstanding. What do you mean? I thought that mothers love their children unconditionally. Unfortunately, they're supposed to. Not every mother does. But some mothers just can't do that. Well, no. Maybe she does love her. It's also our first time seeing Renju as a sprite and hearing his voice, I think. But she has a hard time of it. Shoko was never hugged by her mother. I <laughs> like how mom was like, Can you uh, talk to Renju? But talk to Renju at my bar so we can sell some more liquor. <laughs> it's good. It makes perfect business sense. I love it. Not because her mother wasn't around. She was raised to never develop a sensitivity to affection. No hugs, no piggyback rides, nothing. That doesn't mean she has to continue that down the line. She could change. Maybe that's why she doesn't know how to love Mizuki. When an animal raised in captivity gives birth, sometimes it just doesn't know how to raise its young. Hmm. It's just like that. But still, someone can at least try and educate her. She can at least try to be different. Sounds like she's just doing whatever she knows, rather than, you know, researching or seeing how other mothers treat their children and acting accordingly. What do you think? Why are you asking me about raising a child, hmm? I don't know. Maybe you've got some advice? Maybe a customer said something? Yeah, good point. Really? <laughs> You're not even going to say, oh no, mama, you'd be a great mother. Oh, oh, why are you going to catch me in a trap like that? Did you lose weight? I'm not going to let you set up a joke. Listen to Ren's story. <laughs> She's onto it. What time do you close tonight? When you two are done talking, that's when I'll close up. Sorry about this. Mama still polishing the bonito. Renju's tilting his glass. I do feel bad about you. That doesn't mean she's blameless in all this. Someone has to put a stop to it. If I could have, I would have done it a long time ago. Oh, come on, Renju. Don't be like that. What about counseling? I did recommend that. It's not about recommending. Just drag her damn ass to the office building and get your counseling session. She told me, I'm not sick. Why should I go see a doctor? But she told me she was trying so hard. Was she lying? Mizuki is the problem. Mizuki is the sick one. <laughs> Maybe it's best if Mizuki and Shoko are separated. Hang on, let's see what's in his glass. Whiskey. Drinks the same as Shoko. No, Mizuki would never leave Shoko. She wouldn't hear of it. Mizuki and Shoko are practically attached at the hip. Even with all of the hitting? Yes. Even if she's abused on a daily basis, even if she's treated like garbage... She's still attached to her mother. Maybe. Mizuki is hungry for love. She craves praise and attention and physical affection. She wants it from her mother. That's why she's so attached. But her mother can't give it to her. Couldn't you step in and take over the parenting? I have a company now. This is where I come in. Lemniscate. And we're at a crucial stage of development. I can't take even a single second out of my day to deal with a kid. Hey, that's your daughter you're talking about. Exactly, not just some random kid off the street. Maybe because you two can't cooperate on raising a child, Shoko is having trouble coping. I mean... It's also not doesn't help, then, does it? That Shoko's the only one tending to her child. She needs Renju's help. That might be it. Maybe this is partially my fault. Okay, I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> you two are both awful parents. <laughs> Thank you, Date. Oof. I knew about the whole thing. That was an intense flashback, wasn't it? That's why four years ago, I decided to start taking care of Mizuki. Good on you, Date. <laughs> oh, I just want to give her a hug, punk-ass kid. <laughs> Mizuki, you did nothing wrong. 
Don't blame yourself. Your parents had some pretty big issues. I know, I was there. It's not your fault. Not one single thing was your fault. <laughs> Bloody hell. Emotional roller coasters, emotional merry-go-rounds. Get me out of this place. Let's go to Akume Shrine. Take her somewhere slightly happier. Here we go, Mizuki. Let's try and find some happy memories. Uh -huh. 